sure here today. And this is what Lunar Orbiter created. Takes 48,000 pounds of two-inch videotape that were restored first at uh, the federal government in, uh, on the East Coast, and then it came to JPL for 20 years, and then through uh, Dr. Warden's support and through uh, contribution from uh, Keith Cowan and Space Rep Interactive, we were able to take it, load up two big trucks along with the, uh, the drives that can actually play these, the very last ones that exist in the world, and we're actually able to bring those up to Ames. And here is Ken Zinn, who is the engineer who's led the project to restore the drive. Ken brought the drive up. Uh, at one time, it was estimated it would take $6 million to recreate this capability. Ken's a lot cheaper than that, thank goodness. <clears throat> and so what we have here, Ken and I are actually working on the drive. We're looking at it. Got a bell now. Oh, yeah, yeah, no kidding. Uh, and so we're doing all kinds of work. And you have to understand, this drive had not been turned on for over 20 years. And so we were going through, and this is kind of some of the early work where we didn't quite have the data. And then we're looking at the signals. And, and Ken had to go through each individual system, all the boards. And this was, was one of the results. If you look up here, this is our, it's called a step chart. And this is from the film. And then you see right here, this is the actual video coming off the tapes from the drive. These are negatives because this was filmed on the spacecraft, and so it was a film negative. And so as we're getting it off of the tape, this is a negative image. And then we have uh, Austin Epps, who's one of our students from San Jose State University. We brought it into the computer. Uh, we processed it. And Austin wrote a bunch of routines. He's actually getting class credit from San Jose State University, which is one of the very strong things that both Pete and I over the years are very, very supportive of student efforts. And that's where we, the very first time we saw the glint of the sun off the Atlantic Ocean and Greg was there with us. And so we, it's kind of a, uh, as we call bridging the gap, and, and as Pete uh, alluded to as well, between our Apollo generation and the new generation here. Here also, this is on the screen. The image, and again, you can see the north coast of Africa. That's the Mediterranean. And, and you could never see this type of detail before. And this is why uh, we just really were thrilled when we see this. And Austin is here. He's actually processing uh, the data uh, line by line. There's several million lines. One image is an hour of videotape. And this is where we were actually looking at some of the calibration lines. And Charlie will talk a little bit about this later. Just an amazing, amazing thing to go from the Apollo era to the new era and bring this new group of students to help us go in the next era of exploration. 